received a really interesting letter from Tawana in Brooklyn, from Brooklyn, New York, and she's given me permission to use her name. And she writes, Dear Lisa, I finally have a name for what I feel. I am codependent. Holy crap. Your videos are waking me up big time. What I would like to know is, should I be trying to wake my friends and family up too? I see codependency now everywhere. How did you deal with this when you were waking up? I'm beginning to feel lonelier than ever. Is this normal? Thanks for all you do. Love, Tawana from Brooklyn. So Tawana, um, you know, it's everybody goes through what you're going through. When you start waking up and you have a name for this not feeling good enough, when you ha you've discovered a name for your unconscious, sometimes neurotic need, completely invisible need, program to seek an unconscious, sometimes neurotic need to seek validation outside of yourself. You're holding your breath, waiting for the person that you're with to say, oh, you look beautiful or, oh, you did a good job. You know, you are a people pleaser. You are somebody who, you know, you're the first person at work in the morning. You're the last person to leave. You know, you're always going, 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 going. You have, you're always trying to prove yourself to other people and you don't realize that you may be seeking a sense of I am enoughness from outside of you. Now this could drive us all really bonkers because it's an unconscious drive. And then what happens is when we start to become aware of it, we realize that we have to literally stop our minds when we, when we, when we're going throughout our day, we have to ask ourselves, is this a codependent behavior? Or is this a non-codependent behavior? Is this a healthy behavior or is this an unhealthy behavior? Am I seeking validation or am I generally doing this thing because I want to do it and I expect nothing in return? Um, you know, am I vacuuming the rug before my husband gets home, you know, and emptying all the garbage pails and spraying air freshener around the house, you know, and putting my lipstick on because I'm hoping that today when he walks to the door, he's going to say, Wow, honey, the place looks great. And by the way, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. You know, if we're doing things in our life, physical things in our life, because we're holding our breath, waiting for someone outside of us to deliver us a message that we are enough or that we are valuable, then we're literally giving our power over to other people. When we start waking up and we stop, we start taking responsibility for that behavior. It could be very, very numbing. It could be very um, anxiety provoking because the brain doesn't know what to do, right? The brain only knows to play with the tools that are in the shed. So if people pleasing, toning yourself down, nodding your head when you feel like saying, hell no, you know, if that's all your brain knows how to do, that's all your brain is going to know how to do until you learn how to do something else. So Tawana, I would say it's very normal to wake up and feel, I use the word topsy-turvy in the book, The Road Back to Me, because it was like, like I also say that when I was waking up, it was bittersweet. It was like, what? Like, where have I been, first of all? Like, how could I not have known that I was seeking everybody else's approval for a right to breathe? How could I have not have known that? So it was, I was judging myself. Since that time in my life, many years ago, I realized that it's best to nudge the judge and never judge yourself. Never judge yourself. Discern good behavior from poor behavior. Um, don't judge other people. Discern, you know, healthy person, unhealthy person, above the veil, below the veil, reactive person, mean spirited person. You know, it's good to discern. It's not good to judge. So when you start working, waking up, it could be very topsy turvy. It can be very bittersweet. And also very exciting that, holy crap, if I stay on this path and I learn tools to heal, my whole life can change. So it's very, very exciting. And you also, in most cases, I find that clients that I coach with and people in my programs, they ask the similar questions like, shouldn't my mother know she's codependent? Shouldn't I wake her up to the idea that my father, who is an alcoholic and narcissistic and a gambler and all this, shouldn't she know? that there's a better way? Or shouldn't I tell my brother who's in a very dysfunctional relationship with his wife? Shouldn't I tell them? And my best friend who is on her third marriage, you know, who keeps attracting men who don't work and she has two and three jobs 
and her kids are begging for her attention or her children are estranged from her because she keeps pick, picking men over the children. Shouldn't my friend know that this is a codependent behavior? And I would say, yes, they should know, but not everybody's ready to change because to heal from codependency requires great mental strength. It requires great emotional endurance. It requires the ability to sit in pain, right? We don't want to sit in pain. We want to avoid pain. We don't want to feel our attachment traumas. We don't want to feel visceral memories to when we were infants and we were being abandoned and ignored. We, the brain doesn't want to feel that. In fact, our brains are designed to run away from that, right? Which is why we end up in these codependent behaviors in the first place. Because when I fear you leaving me, even though you might be a very dysfunctional person, when I feel you leaving, then I get in contact with my toxic loneliness. I get in touch with my abandonment trauma. I get in touch with that time in my life where I was a powerless, maybe infant or a toddler or you know, young child, preschooler, or, you know, age, um, school age child, where I'm experiencing this detachment and this disconnection from the people that were supposed to love me. And I don't want to feel that. So as an adult, because as it is below, so shall it be above, everything I'm experiencing today is a mirror to what I experienced in childhood. If I'm experiencing trauma today, that means that I have an unresolved trauma from the past. And today is an opportunity to heal that, which is why I do what I do. I want to encourage people who are lost and lonely and afraid and who have feel who feel abandoned and who don't know what they're doing wrong. I want to encourage you to figure it out and never give up and use this magnificent brain that human beings have been born with to your advantage. Use cognition to your advantage. Learn to organize your thoughts in a fashion that allows you to connect to higher thought processes and allows you to understand your lower thoughts or the, the mind, the, the seven-year-old, six-year-old, five-year-old psyche that was being created and imprinted by experiences that were not your fault. I want you to understand that because it's really, really exciting to know that you can be liberated from that and bring more love and light into yourself and thus the entire planet. This is the shift. This is, this is truly the work that we are here to do. It's to evolve the consciousness. And so, yes, it's, we want people to wake up, but not everybody's prepared for what it means to heal from codependency. To heal from codependency, you've got to be willing to look inside. You've got to be willing to acknowledge the pain that has been repressed and denied and suppressed. And you've got to be able to learn, and that's what I teach people how to do, how to sit in the anxiety and the pain of the moment and just extend your ability to sit with it without fleeing from it and developing a codependent behavior or an addiction or some type of dissociation or distraction to avoid the pain. So we have to learn to sit and with sit with it, and we have to learn how to observe it and then process it, allow our bodies to eliminate it, and then once it's cleared, learn how to deal, learn how to teach ourselves literal step by step um, skills that'll allow us to prevent ourselves from being codependent in the future. Right. So we're all about just breaking patterns as we go and getting better and healthier and healthier as we go. It's not an all or nothing. It's not one day I was codependent and the next day I wasn't. This is a long freaking journey. And I'm, you know, in recovery many, many years now, close to two decades, and I'm still working on tuning my vibrations and tuning my thoughts and paying attention to my beliefs and, and practicing non-resistance and blah, blah, blah. So to want to, yes, you're going to start to see a lot more patterns that you ever saw before because you're not unconscious anymore. You're living from a higher state of awareness, right? So you're out of the amygdala. The hippocampus isn't controlling your reactions every more, anymore, which is awesome. Thank you so much for waking up and bringing more love and light into this world. I think it's awesome. You will feel a tendency to want to wake people up too. But my best advice is, you know, people will begin to say, you know, Tawana, you seem so much more balanced. You seem so much more happy. Like, you know, that girl said something to you and you didn't react. And you're going to be like, yeah, I love myself. Like when you love yourself, you really, you don't attract so much garbage. And, you know, if, if people are around you, they're trying to hurt you. Like you don't accept their energy anymore because you know that you're enough, you know? Um, and just by being a shining example of, you know, a, a true sense of worthiness of the self, especially if you haven't had it before, people will start asking you questions about why do you think you are this way? Like, what do you know that I don't know? 
And that's when you can, the door creeps open to someone's heart and mind. And that's when you'll be able to shine your light on them even more. In the meantime, just continue to work on yourself. And, you know, if you do find yourself saying, mom, that's codependent. Like you don't have to deal with that guy. Like he's just taking advantage of you and you're, you don't feel like you're good enough. And that's why you don't want to be alone. And that's because you were abandoned as a child and nobody was up there for you. You know, nobody supported you. That's why. And your mom might, might look at you like, girl, shut up. You know, that might happen. Or mom might say, yeah, you know, I, I really, maybe you're right. You know? So I do think it's worth, worth it, you know, to give it a shot to say something along those lines and like, maybe even investigate, you know, but tiptoe around it. I got caught up many, many years in dysfunctional thinking because when I found this out, I looked at my mom, I was like, oh my God, she's so codependent. And my dad's a narcissist, you know, and like, I want to save her. And I looked at my sister's relationship with her ex-husband. I was like, I want to save her, you know, and I looked at my brother, I want to save him. You know, I wanted to save my nieces and my nephews. But what ended up happening was I got kicked in the teeth, you know, um, I got slaughtered by my family when I started. My father was like, ah, that's psychological mumbo jumbo. And boy, what a mess he's in today. So he should have listened to me 20 years ago. But so I would say my best advice is, you know, if you feel like comfortable saying something to one of your friends about their behavior, you know, I would, I would try to say something, but be very careful about their reaction and don't take it personally. Know that to heal from codependency and to heal from narcissistic abuse, addictions, and dissociation requires warrior-like strength. A warrior is somebody to me that goes into battle knowing that they're going to feel pain. Most likely they're going to feel pain, but they go anyway because they see the bigger picture, because they want, they believe peace is on the other end of that, whatever conflict, you know, or pain, whatever, whatever's on the other end is going to be peaceful. You know, um, and so they're willing to sustain the trauma and the drama and the pain, you know, to get to the other side. So you're a warrior, Tawana, and I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so honored by your presence. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider joining my Facebook group and um, maybe even my soon to be launched membership site. And, um, you know, just continue rocking on and learning all you can and, and tapping into that amazing, beautiful light that is within you. Remember, as you tap into that light, you not only benefit yourself, your children, the people who live with you, but you, you really help increase the vibrations of the planet, you know, and, and your recovery is making the planet a better place for me, for my husband, and for my children, my future grandchildren, and beyond. So there are no words to thank those of you who are on this path and taking it seriously and who are interested in tools. There are no words for me to thank you for staying on this path. So I'm going to try anyway and say thank you. Thank you for being here. Namaste, dear ones. I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you.